Howdy. Uh, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle. I'm doing a little impromptu video. I just turned the camera on and I'm feeling a little stressed out right now. Um, I'm afraid I'm not going to follow through on doing my documentary film about Goddess Kring, my public access TV show. And I am making this video just to document the mood that I'm in right now, which is I feel like I'm really grateful that I have the freedom to speak into the camera about this. And I'm really grateful that I have opportunities in my career the way that I make a living, all the different ways that I make a living, which I won't mention here because I'm tired of, let's see if I can do this monologue and not repeat myself. I've already told you, the audience, what I do for a living many, many times. If you want to know, look at my other videos and I talk about it, but I'm trying not to repeat myself. Today, I worked from 8.30 in the morning all the way till about 3 p.m., uh, with two different jobs and thought about my ideas about making my documentary Goddess Kring film, think about working with some serious filmmaker people that I could perhaps hire to help me do this, figure out what my budget is for that, I'm not a wealthy person, but I'm extremely frugal and organized so I can figure out how to do my art. So the way I did my public access TV show was alone in my apartment and I had a full spectrum light and I directed myself. I was the writer, producer, director, and star of my show and I was at my most confident doing it that way. When I went to the cable TV studio and tried to work with other people in front of other people, I would just laugh and got shy and was horrible at doing that in front of other people. So I could not do the goddess cring, you know, dance around with body paint and be confident in front of other people very well. So I actually kind of like the lighting. I imagine uh, some people are going to not like that lighting, but I like when the light is, the sunlight is shining through the window into my eyes. I like that lighting. So I'm sure it'll change. Every five seconds, the lighting will change. I did my show by myself. And when I was in an inspired mood, I think my show was very powerful. When I was in a bad mood, I actually also think it was powerful because I would spill my guts and talk about my personal problems on my show. Um, some musicians have written songs about my show. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just saying this to acknowledge that my show had an impact on people to the point where they wrote songs about it. And I'm proud of that. You know, I feel like, well, okay, if my show is, 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 inspiring people to write songs about it. Joel Underwood wrote a song called Cringe. Some people say, I think my last name is Cringen. It's Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, K-R-I-N-G-E-N. But some people say cringe accidentally. And Joel Underwood wrote a song called Cringe uh, because he was concerned about my mental health and wrote a song Somewhere I can find the lyrics about an earthquake and a train wreck and, a you know, just watching me like freak out and have bad moods on camera and feel, um, you know, self-destructive and things like that. So with mental health challenges in terms of moods and my personal life, like I've always been like pretty much a workaholic since I was 17 years old and uh, <laughs> pretty much. When I moved out of my mom's house and was living on my own with my first high school boyfriend and was just really into work and, and studied graphic design. So I'm just thinking back on my life and I'm thinking my public access show I did by myself 
if I do a Goddess Kring documentary film, I actually want to find people who didn't like my show. I know some people called me Nutcase Kring. Some people called me an attention whore, a narcissist, a, a crazy person, um, all kinds of negative things. And I'm thinking people like drama. And I don't want to just do a movie that's about la la la, a bunch of nice stuff. I want to do a movie that's about the reality of me doing my show, uh, partly because I felt trapped in my shyness, in my introversion. And I always wanted, since I was a little kid, to have my own platform and, and broadcast to an audience. But I was always a bit shy about actually doing that in a regular sing or dance or act kind of way. I was in choir in high school. The funnest thing I ever did in high school was imitate and impersonate and lip sync to Mick Jagger and dance around extremely sexually in front of my entire high school as a way of rebelling. So I guess that's some of my anger that came through. I wish I had a video of me uh, uh, singing to She's So Cold by the Rolling Stones and stuffing the microphone down my pants and gyrating around um, in an extremely provocative way, as much as I could get away with in front of my high school, shocking the heck out of my entire high school who thought I was so shy. And then later on going to dance at the Lusty Lady as a, you know, performer. Um, and now I'm a model for um, figure drawing classes. Um, and my uniform is nothing. So <laughs> I do have a uniform for my job as a figure model and it's nothing that's my uniform so there um so i'm kind of um thinking that if i do a documentary maybe i should just do it all by myself but the thing is i might need a little bit of technical help because when i did my show i hit i had a vcr and i could see myself on the monitor and i was just like stop record stop record stop record that's how it would cut from scene to scene sometimes i'd turn the camera on and i would just talk for 28 minutes straight if I was in the mood for that and had enough to say for 28 minutes straight. Uh, other times though, I would just like hit stop and then I would change the filter on the lens and hit record, stop, record, stop, record, stop, record. And each time it would look like I changed the scene. I changed the lighting. I changed the filter on the lens. I changed the camera angle or I would have my torso in the frame versus my face in the frame always trying to get an aesthetically pleasing view of my face. So I did my show by myself. So I'm thinking the documentary film should probably mostly be me doing it. I'm the writer, director, producer, actor, the main star of the show, Goddess Kring. But I would like to interview people who didn't like my show. If they, if, if somebody, if, if you are somebody who used to watch me and didn't like it, I want to hear from you. Um, but if you liked it also, I, I think I already have four people who appreciate what I did, who said they're willing to sign a release and be in our documentary film and say something on camera about, and you can be honest, like if there's certain things about it that made you uncomfortable, even though you like what I do, I'm fine with hearing that because I want the documentary about Goddess Kring to be honest and authentic and maybe a little bit uncomfortable, you know, like acknowledging the discomfort because my boundaries because my TV show was kind of an act of rebellion and me exercising my freedom of speech and seeing what uh, what the boundaries could actually be, uh, me not wearing any clothing and with body paint and doing poetry that I made up and wrote in my journal. Some of it I made up off the top of my head. Most of it I had written in my journal and I memorized it and I was saying, you know, Bada boo, bada bing, catch the wing song, spiral drive, you know, an opal moonstone and cranberry moon drops, cranberry moon dream, high bloom through the roots in cahoots, sliding doors, eyes adore, ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams and all that kind of, I get really intense and I say my poetry. I really like the new uh, Tori Amos interview with uh, Rick Beato very inspiring. So thank you, Tori Amos and Rick Beato for that. But I just want to say that that's something in my in real life that I really appreciate right now. Uh, so I'm just thinking about the Goddess Kring documentary and how I want to follow through on doing it. There's some angry part of me that wants to be self-destructive and sabotage and not do it. And that's just silly. Maybe I'm just afraid. Like I would rather actually do a really crappy documentary than no documentary at all. But it's actually better to actually do the best possible documentary that I could do. Like I would like to do a full 
90 minutes, 90 to 120 minutes, I think a full two hours. I'm sure that we could cover a full two hours and make it interesting. Um, and technically and technically and content wise good enough to submit to film festivals like Seattle Film Festival, Sundance Film Festival, you know, the fantasy egg, it's a mattress people. I'm friends a little bit with those people a little bit. I'm a little bit friendly with those people. They know about me as Goddess Kring Public Access. And I work with them a little bit and I might ask, they're very busy working on their other, their next film, which is called Crystal Ball. It's amazing to see their success with fantasy egg, it's a mattress. Um, and they have their film um, playing in a bunch of film festivals. It's been in Texas. It's been in England. It's been in New York. It's been in Brooklyn. It's been in, you know, like Manhattan. When I say New York, I mean Manhattan and Brooklyn and Austin, Texas, and somewhere in England. I forgot the name of where it was in England, in Baltimore, Maryland. They met John Waters, the film director. I mean, that's amazing to witness that. Um, and they worked hard on that film. And the film is a little bit corny, and yet it resonates with audiences. And people root for the hero, for the underdog, for Fantasy Egg, It's a Mattress. And I saw the film, and I enjoyed it. And But I can see why some people might criticize it. And yet, I like the weirdness of it and the eccentricityness of it and the sort of cheesy humor in it. Um and you root for the underdog kind of feeling of it. My Goddess Crane would be a documentary, a film would be a documentary, and it would be a, I sometimes relate to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know, Willy Wonka and all that, and um, Alice in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz, and especially the Wizard of Oz, you know, the, the moral to the story being Dorothy had the power all along, because I think Goddess Kring thought she needed to be Goddess Kring. And really what she needs to do is just love herself as the little lady behind the curtain instead of thinking I need to be Goddess Kring. Maybe I can just be Shannon and that's okay and I can love myself. But the message is probably gonna be more complicated than that. But that's part of the gist of the message. The movie would start maybe with me driving around in my art car my current art car, a 2010 Honda Fit that's covered in rhinestones that I spent three years doing. It's very well done, intricate design. Uh, me discovering I'm on the autism spectrum. Me, um, you know, in my more recent life, it explains why I'm 55 and I never had kids and never got married. I've had tons and tons and tons and tons of boyfriends. Um and I'm currently in a relationship and I'm trying to figure it out. I'm really not very good at having normal boyfriend, girlfriend type relationships. I'm trying. I'm a very sensual person, but I'm, I like to live by myself. I never felt safe with anybody enough to have a kid with somebody. I, I ended up having an abortion in my twenties. I talked about that on some of my shows, um, cried about it, had, you know, regrets about it. Uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, who knows what would have happened if I'd made a different choice. I don't know, but I didn't feel safe with the person that wanted to do that with me. And I just would long story, but I'm um, just have to let that go. And that was in my twenties. And um, I had breast reduction surgery in my twenties and I had an abortion in my twenties and my twenties, thirties, forties. Now I'm in my fifties and I'm still art modeling. So the film would start with the current life of me uh, being in my art car, driving around. Maybe I would drive to where the cable access studio used to be, which is in Seattle and 98th and Aurora. Uh, maybe I would just suddenly, maybe something stressful might happen and I would have like a freak out stress, anxiety, flip out, like the song I wrote called Dumpster Diving Boots, where I threw hand-painted boots into a dumpster and I saw them for sale a couple days later at a secondhand store, which is true. And I also painted a top hat for Tom Petty, Tori Amos, Tom Petty, you know the story. So hand-painted stuff. So I might like have like an autistic meltdown, like trigger, like something might trigger me. And then I have a flashback about my TV show. And then maybe we talk to some people who like my show and some people who didn't like my show. And we talk about why and how I feel picked on and teased and made fun of. And I feel like I'm really intelligent and talented. And yet I'm not, to this day, I feel kind of like I'm really proud of my career. And yet 
making a living in freelance, you know, I have like about four different jobs that I do freelance that are really creative, but I'm not really able to do my art full time. And I'm not like successful. You, you would think that with my amount of talent, I would be way more successful than I am. And that's partly because of ADHD and autism, I suppose. Like, I don't know how to schmooze with people. My ego is kind of like, because everybody has an ego. When I say ego, I don't mean that it's good to not have an ego. Everybody has an ego. We can't even help but have an ego. But some egos, like I have a kind of ego that's constantly putting myself down and scrutinizing myself and afraid of success success instead of the kind of ego that where I think I'm so great and I deserve success. I don't have that kind of ego. And in fact, it's good to not be arrogant. But I think having a lot of self-confidence is a positive thing and being open to success is a positive thing. We all have egos. So all the musicians, you know, Tom Petty and Tori Amos and Neil Young and Bob Dylan, they all have egos. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, they have confidence and the audacity to write songs and and promote them and get out there and tour and get out there and do their best and uh, achieve success and and shine bright and not apologize for how talented they are. You know, I have the kind of ego where I'm kind of almost embarrassed um, that I'm talented and, and I don't want people to feel jealous of me. I mean, that's sad. And like in high school, I used to win tennis matches and then feel guilty for winning a tennis match, I would feel sorry for the person who lost to me. So that's the kind of ego I have, which, you know, you could say, well, maybe I shouldn't be in this business. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be a, a performance artist kind of person if I don't have the right kind of ego for it. But I'm just saying that part of me wants to sabotage, you know, the documentary, but I want to follow through and do my documentary film. So I want to do a film that's good enough. I don't know if I should mostly do by myself or look for other filmmakers who want to work with me. Um, at least a little bit to help me do certain technical things. I'm learning video editing right now. And um, I'm just figuring out, am I going to have to mostly do this film by myself or should I look for a crew or something? And I find people who like my show and people who don't like, I think I have four people lined up that like my show that are willing to talk on camera about why they liked it um, in an honest way. They can even talk about, you know, something that made them uncomfortable because, you know, my boundaries are weird. And my show was partly maybe a little bit of a cry for help um, and support and reaching out. But I think my show was also just an experiment to see how do I affect other people and how do other people affect me? It was partly like a experiment with a community um, in Seattle. So who watched public access television so I want to do a film that has the the current me and then flashbacks of my show and then inter maybe some interesting like interview with me, figure out what kind of questions. Maybe I need to get feedback from the community about what questions would you like Goddess Crane to be asked in the film to talk on camera about. So and then something about my past, present and my future and the fact that I was raised by unusual parents who are both very critical. And yet at the same time, my parents are both very talented. My mom with visual art and my dad with comedy and folk music. And he's a very great athlete to this day. He's he's 80. Um, he's around 80 and he's a personal fitness trainer and still an amazing tennis player. Um, and. He almost went pro in the 70s and almost played Jimmy Connors, the tennis player, but he instead he taught tennis um, more than he competed in tennis. But my dad is a very talented athlete and comedy. He's written comedy and folk music and he used to sing and play guitar, but he never really professionally published it much. But I grew up with being around that and I grew up with my mom telling me about Krishnamurti and Eastern Advaita Vedanta non-duality philosophy. And she's also a very good designer and does very unique visual art with metal and clay, but she's very private. So that's why I never show my her artwork like she doesn't want me to show her art. So she's very private about she has a, just a different way than me. So my mom and I are very different, but I'm very influenced by the wisdom of the Eastern philosophy that she taught me about. And she taught me about Hunter Wasser. So I have interesting parents who um, the pros and cons, I, I might write a memoir ca called checkerboard childhood in the wild lively wood understood. That's a line in one of my songs and one of my poems, swirly girl, give it a whirl, find the pearl uh, checkerboard childhood in the wild 
in the wild lively would understood is about my childhood was both very good and very bad at the same time. So I say checkerboard childhood because both my mom and dad are really good people and yet they didn't give me what I needed in some ways. And yet I'm really fortunate in other ways. So I feel like it's totally a checkerboard of dark and light. The fact that my parents divorced was sort of tragic, but it seemed like that was normal. And going back and forth between my mom and dad blah, 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 is just very stressful. So I want to do a movie. And I'm gonna. I'm trying to figure it out, and that's where I'm at right now. It's um, October sixteenth, two thousand twenty-four. I'm gonna turn fifty-six years old on October twenty-fifth, two thousand twenty-four. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed that I'm not more successful as a fifty-six-year-old, but whatever. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm healthy and I'm strong. Yeah, I'm strong and healthy, and I'm just feeling a little angry today, but I'm grateful. I forgot what else I was gonna say. October 20th would have been Tom Petty, who widens my jetty's uh, 74th birthday. And my friends and I are going to see a male and female friend of mine and me are going to see the Tom Petty movie, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Beach Party. Yeah. Tom. Oh, wait, see. Heartbreakers, Beach Party. Yeah. Heartbreakers Beach Party. Yeah. It's like a joke. It's like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers song that's like a joke song. Like they're jamming out and they recorded this Beach Party song that's silly about a cookout. And um, they never really put it on a real album, but it's on the box set because I have all the Tom Petty music and it's on this box set that they released um, with unusual, weird kind of songs that were never really on any records. And it's really cool, fun song. It's funny. It's Cameron Crowe's director debut. So we're going to see it Sunday, October 20th. Um, and I, I would say that's kind of my birthday present to myself to go to that movie. Cause I don't, I don't have any plans on my birthday. I don't know what I'm going to do on my birthday, whatever. I don't care, really care. October 25th. I don't really care. I'm going to do something. I don't know what. So, um, I'll figure it out. So yeah, my work is my life. I'm on this planet to do my art. I don't have family. I have a mom and a dad. And when they pass away, that's the end of my family. So I'll be by myself. So that's okay with me. That's I made my bed and I'm going to lie in it. So uh, I love to work. So I'll probably work, 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 work. My dad retired and then got bored. So he became a personal fitness trainer. So um, he still works and and he's 80 and he doesn't really even need the money. He has social security, but he still works because it's fun for him to have a purpose. So I'll probably do the same. I'll probably, even if I'm on social security, I will still be working in some capacity. Uh, I want to just keep doing my art for the rest of my life. My purpose on this planet is to do my art and all the other jobs that I do that I've mentioned before in previous videos, um, I do several different things for a living in a creative freelance kind of random, very chaotic way. My schedule is extremely challenging. I commute all over the city, uh, north, south, east, and west, constantly busy every single day. Don't really have time to relax. Don't really have time for much of a social life, but that's okay. I don't really want much of a social life. I just want to do my art. And... That involves poetry, music, uh, writing, um, painting, photography, and these video monologues. And art modeling is part of my creative expression, I would say. And so thank you for listening. And so I hope I don't give up. This video is a pep talk from me to me. Hey, Shannon Kringen, please don't give up. Do your documentary. Do a documentary film about the Goddess Crane public access TV show. Feel inspired by Fantasy A Gets a Mattress and how they followed through and they did their film and they put it in in um, film festivals and they are just riding the wave as far as it will go. And they're working on another film called Crystal Ball and that's inspirational. They are focused. They are driven. They are good at ignoring anyone who criticizes them and they just full speed ahead. So that's what I need to do is full speed ahead. Um get out of my own way and either find other people that want to help me make this film. I could maybe even hire some people to help me and, or I could on a shoestring budget and, or I could do it myself. Uh, if I just slow down and I don't let my autism, my chaotic brain and my ADHD, um, 
part of what hurts my feelings is a lot of people thought I was on drugs when I did my show because I would stare into the camera and act all like weird and like, but that's just the way that I am. I don't, I don't, I'm not even on any drugs. So not that there's anything wrong with people who experiment in those kind of things, but that's, that's not me. So I just felt misinterpreted, misunderstood. Uh, so I have my own way of doing things. And I just like when I, take photos of mud puddles i see shapes in mud puddles that other people don't notice and maybe some people need to be on drugs in order to stare at a mud puddle and see amazing shapes in it but i don't i can look at a mud puddle and see amazing shapes in it without being on any kind of drug so that's part of me so that's part of my neurodivergent brain um there's pros and cons to having a very chaotic adhd dyslexic autistic brain that i seem to have so i want to follow through on the movie project so a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z now i know my abcs next time won't you sing with goddess kring so there it is so i'm going to sign off now i feel better after doing this video I'm going to try. This is my own pep talk for myself. Please don't give up on making your film. Follow through. Do your best. Don't worry about it being perfect. It's never going to be perfect. I'm not trying to win the Pulitzer Prize or the Nobel Peace Prize or a Grammy or an Academy Award or a Cannes Film Festival, Palme d'Or, whatever the heck it's called. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to do my own best version of I would like to tell a compelling story I would like to write a memoir of my life checkerboard childhood something 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 is what it's going to be called and and I want to write a sequel I have a poetry book out called Kringonian Pizzazz and the sequel to that is going to be called Kring Flower song lyric book um, poems that I've turned into songs with Dave Flowers from Interactive Jack Records I'm excited that Hollow Earth Radio has played some of our songs on their radio show. Um, Surrender Your Ego, I think, is one of the shows. And then I forgot the name of the other show. I'm sorry. I, I forgot the name. But thank you, Hollow Earth Radio, for playing some of the Kring Flower music. I'm going to send more music to that person, the DJ, that nice DJ. I don't know his name, but thank you so much to the nice DJ who appreciates our music and read my poetry book. Uh, so I want to continue on. I want to write a memoir. I want to make a documentary film and I want to publish another, uh, poetry book that's song lyric book, Kring Flower song lyric book. So these are some of my ideas of, of my projects that I want to follow through on and not give up on, uh, express myself and just let, you know, contribute to the world of publishing in this way. That's my contribution to the culture here in Seattle and my purpose on this earth because I don't have a family. I have a mom and a dad, and that's pretty much it. I have some other distant relatives that I sadly have lost touch with. I'm sorry to if any of my relatives ever see this video. I'm sorry. I'm not good at being a normal, traditional family person. I love you all, but I'm just doing my thing, just trying to survive. My purpose on this earth is to do my art and share it with whoever likes it. And learn, try to figure out how to love myself. That's kind of my purpose. Um, that's what I feel. Okay, thanks for listening. Have a nice day, everyone. Do what you love. Do what you believe in. Trust your instinct. Trust your heart and your soul. And trust your own instincts. Don't let other people push you around. <laughs> Do what you love. And get out of your own way. If you're being mean to yourself, try to love yourself. Try to give yourself a hug and treat yourself the way you would treat a cute little three-year-old kid that you love. Bye for now.